using the Python data science stack to do this analysis, so pandas, scipy, and numpy, and I'll be doing my visualizations in matplotlib. So to begin, I'll first break down what Bayesian A-B testing is. Uh, A-B testing is simply a kind of randomized experiment that, can, that compares two variants of the same thing to see which one is better. It's, making, it's great for making small tweaks, like changing different colors on a web page, uh, different word choice in a campaign, or different design layouts in an online store, for example. Uh, it's great for increasing uh, single metrics like conversions, signups, click-throughs, and shares, and making sure that our results are statistically significant. Now, A-B testing is popular in many industries, but it's particularly useful in tech because it's quite easy to set up and run these randomized experiments online. And if you're just trying to break in the field, uh, like as a data analyst, A-B testing is one of the bread and butter skills that you should know. So a great way to think about uh, the uncertainty when it comes to measuring things like this is to use a Bayesian approach. Now, Bayesian statistics is a school statistics can seem a bit confusing, but it's actually very intuitive. We simply just update our prior beliefs to new information. So the Bayesian approach to making predictions simply asks us to take the balance of how strongly we believe our prior beliefs versus how compelling any new evidence is. And we take this combination and we turn that into our posterior belief. Um, in a Bayesian approach, instead of spitting out single numbers or frequencies, Bayesians use probability distributions to model their prior beliefs, the data, and their posteriors, as this allows them to assign some probability to every possible outcome that they can see. And the Bayesian approach is great for A-B testing, because you can use data as it comes in and keep continually updating our prior beliefs and new information. And there's no limit or no restrictions to the sample sizes for both our A and B groups. We can use as much data as we have. So to begin, uh, I'll just jump into a simple example. Let's say that I have an online store, and I use uh, Python banner ads to direct traffic to it. Now, I'm currently using the one on the left, who tells people to slither over to my online store. But one day, my design team comes up with a new design, and they, which they insist is better. Now, I don't personally see it, but we're going to let it go to the audience and see what they think. So we'll run an A-B test of the click rates of both the ads and see which one performs better. So for the experiment, we'll serve uh, each variant of the ad to 1,000 people each and compare which one has the best click rate. So the first step in doing any kind of Bayesian analysis is to first understand our prior belief. In the context of this A-B test, it's simply asking, what do we think the click rate of our banner ads is typically like? And my answer to this can be completely subjective, and that's kind of the art of doing proper Bayesian inference. Um, so to model my belief, I'll use a beta distribution, which has two parameters, alpha, the number of times you see a success, and beta, the number of times you see a failure. And you can think of alpha and beta kind of like odds, with the only difference being that the higher the numbers are, um, the more confident you are about that prior belief, because the higher numbers will decrease the variance of the curves. So let's say I did some research, and I found out that uh, average banner ads in my industry have a click rate of about 16%. I could model this belief in a couple different ways, depending on how I feel about it. If I was confident, I could use a beta 1684 to represent that, which is the red curve. But if I was more skeptical, I could scale that all the way down to a beta 421, which is still centered around 16, but is more spread out across all the possible click rates we could have. But for the sake of this experiment, I'll have a neutral approach and use a beta 842 distribution. Now, now that we have our priors set, we can begin uh, simulating an A-B test. And I'll let you guys in on a secret right off the bat. Um, our A variant has a click rate of 15%, while our B variant has a click rate of 20. And the re now, usually, we do uh, A-B analysis to figure out what this actually is. But for the sake of uh, simulating the test, we need to know it up front. So to simulate serving our ad randomly to 1,000 groups, 1,000 people each, uh, we'll use NumPy's uh, rand function, which spits out two vectors of 1,000 numbers between 0 and 1. And then for the A group, every number that is less than 0 0.15 will be a success. And every number that is less than 20% or 0 0.2 will be a success for B, so roughly 15 and 20% of the data. And the failures for each group will simply be the remainder. Um, so now that we've generated our random data, all we have to do is update uh, our prior belief. And to do this, we'll split it into two new beta distributions, one for A and one for B. And we'll simply add the successes and failures for A and B to the uh, prior beliefs we had before, which was the 842 beta distribution. So the result of that is the fo are the following uh, two curves, with the B variant being in green and the A variant being in blue. And as we can see, B does beat A, as it's more set around 0 0.2, while A is set around 0 0.17. And since we used uh, 1,000 people each for each test, uh, the variance of both the curves is decreased. 
So we can be relatively confident in these uh, measures. But there is still a bit of overlap between the two curves. So to test our results, we can do a Monte Carlo simulation. Now, very simply speaking, uh, the whole idea behind Monte Carlo methods is to simply model a problem and then sample it many times to get a solution. And that's exactly what we'll do here. So we'll grab uh, 100,000 random samples from both our A and B posteriors, and we'll move them into uh, Pandas series for easy comparisons. And then all we have to do is just count the number of times that a B sample be an A sample. And if we divide that by the number of trials overall, we get 0.98, which means 98% of the time, uh, B, did in B, B did indeed beat A. And this can be likened to a one-sided p-value of 2%. So these results are statistically significant. Uh, now, the great thing about doing a Monte Carlo simulation is that we can also use these samples to see the relative improvement of B and A. And to do this, we just divide every B sample by its relative A sample and plot that in a histogram. And as we can see, uh, the histogram here is centered around between 1.1 and 1.3. So we can say that this level of improvement is the most likely. And we can also see through visual inspection that uh, an improvement of less than one is very unlikely, and a 60% improvement over A is also very unlikely. And being able to visualize our results like this allows us to easily reason about the merits of implementing a new variant compared to any costs or difficulties in getting that started. So long story short, uh, Python's data science stack makes A-B testing very simple. Uh, this analysis didn't require many lines of code at all. But if you're interested in learning more about A-B testing, I highly suggest you check out uh, a free course on the subject by Google, offered on udacity.com. And if you're more interested in learning about uh, Bayesian statistics, I highly encourage you to check out uh, Cameron davidson Pillen's Bayesian, Bayesian Methods for Hackers, as there's a bunch of great uh, projects with Python and the PyMC3 module. And another great resource for learning about Bayesian stats is to check out Will Kurt's Count Bayes blog, as it has a bunch of great projects in R, but if you do them in Python, you'll be well on your way to being a great Bayesian anal an analyst. Uh, thank you very much. A <laughs> <laughs> little nervous, but... Thank okay. you, Will. Uh, yeah, thanks. Do we have any questions in the room? Yes. Yes, Vlad. So, uh, Thank you. Uh, so why Bayesian? And why can you uh, summarize why it's uh, much better than Frequentist? Mm. Or can we use in parallel both of them? Uh, now, to be honest, I'm not too um, versed in Frequentist versus Bayesian. But at least for this analysis, uh, the whole Bayesian approach to examining uncertainty, uh, it's uh, pretty easy to be intuitive about. You can kind of use things in probabilistic terms to see which is better and which is worse, I suppose. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any further questions in the room? Thank you, Will. Hey, great. Thank you very much.